When you are first starting a blog, typically your number one priority is going to be driving traffic back to that blog because traffic is how you're going to make money with your blog, selling ad spaces, selling affiliate products, your own products, maybe getting clients or driving signups to your email list. And the number one way that I recommend bloggers drive traffic to their blogs, whether they are in the beginning and just starting, or they've been doing this for a while is by using Pinterest. And I have worked with countless clients over the years in order to help them achieve more traffic to their blogs using Pinterest. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you my my number one best way to drive traffic to your blog using Pinterest. And if you haven't started a blog yet, or you've just started it, check out my free blog and crash course down below in the description. It is going to help you get your blog up and running in just five days. And this crash course is going to tell you everything that you need to know. So I will leave the link down below in the description. Now, the first thing that you want to do if you are absolutely brand new is you're going to want to set up a business account and this is absolutely free to do, but a business account is just going to give you insights and stats that you wouldn't normally have when you are posting Pinterest pins. And for some of you, you may not be completely brand new to Pinterest. You might already have a personal Pinterest account that you use to repin whatever you want. So you may be tempted to use that account that you've already built up with followers and boards to convert that to a business account and use that because you can technically convert your personal account that you already have to a business account, but I would not recommend that you do that. And I would recommend that you completely start over. And the reason for this is you may have an account that already has boards on it, already has followers, it's already gaining traction. So it would make sense logically you would think to use that account since you are not starting from zero. But the problem is if you had used that account for just random personal pinning for maybe weddings and hair and nails and recipes and all this other random stuff, Pinterest has a very strict distinction between users and content creators on the platform. So people may have followed you because they like the stuff that you were repinning, but they may not be interested in whatever it is that you've started a blog for. So I would recommend completely starting over brand new account, zero followers, because if people are following you for weddings and you start doing a mental health blog or a fashion blog, even they're going to be following you for two totally different reasons. And Pinterest is going to push out your pins to those followers. No one is going to interact with them, or at least not enough people are going to interact with them. And then Pinterest is going to think this isn't a good pin. And then they're going to kill it in the feed. So we're going to essentially be starting over from zero either way, but you'd have a better chance of starting from zero with a brand new account than one that you've just use for personal or random pinning. And it will not take that long in my personal experience to grow a Pinterest account as long as you're doing it the right way. Because you can see this account right here went from six clicks to 164 clicks in as little as three months with my strategy. So just start over and start right. And the right way to start, I recommend just setting up a brand new Pinterest business account and using your blog business email. Now, if you don't have a blog business email, you can just set up a free Gmail. So mine would be Sarah Marie at gmail.com because that is my blog name. Or you can have a professional domain email. I have mine through SiteGround because SiteGround is my hosting company and they give you a free domain email. So it's not a Gmail. It is Sarah at sarahmarie.blog. And then we can actually get to setting up your account. So when you are setting up your Pinterest account, you're just going to need a few boards set up with keyword research descriptions and titles. Now you don't need to start with a ton of boards all off the bat. I recommend that you start with maybe like three to five because you want your Pinterest account and all of the boards on it to be active. So if you start with 10 to 15 different boards and you don't have enough things to pin on them, you're going to just get a little bit overwhelmed. So when you are first starting, just start with three to five. You don't need a whole ton and then do some keyword research in order to allow Pinterest to know what those boards are going to be about. And the easiest way to keyword research, there's a ton of different strategies that I can teach you and I will in different videos, but for the most basic one, just go to the Pinterest search bar, search up whatever topic that you want, whatever board you want to create, search up a few words and see what people are looking up, see what is coming up in that search bar. And then when you click enter, you may also get little like keyword bubbles up at the top. When you see those, those are going to be good to put into your board descriptions and your board titles because those are the most popular things that people are searching up. You can also go in and search by boards. So if you type in what you kind of want a board name to be, you can look for boards with that specific name and see the different variations that people have 
to decide, is this going to be a good board name? Because you want to show up and search. The number one way to get traffic from Pinterest to your blog is going to be keyword research and SEO. So you need to have a good keyword research strategy in place if any of this is going to work. You can also use the Pinterest keyword trends tool, which you can find up at the top of the Pinterest bar. And if you want a more in-depth video on how to use that, I can definitely create one because the Pinterest trends tool is really useful for getting other keyword opportunities. And there's honestly just so much that you can do in Pinterest to find the right keywords. But for the basics, just use the keyword research bar because that's all you need to start. And then once your account is set up with a few boards, all you need to do is start pinning. Now there's a lot of different strategies that go into pinning, but when you are starting out, I recommend that you have 10 to 15 blog posts before you start pinning, before you set up your account so that you have enough links to really rotate out. Because if you only have two or three blog posts that you can pin, you're going to be using those a lot and you don't want to repin your pins a ton of times because you could get marked in the spam filter. Now, when I say that a lot of people freak out and they are terrified of this happening to them. But if you are pinning two or three links, for like a single month, or if you pin them in the same week, nothing's gonna happen to you. I ended up getting pushed into the Pinterest spam filter and I was pinning the same like five or 10 links for months on end before I accidentally got put in the Pinterest spam filter, which will then not push out any of your pins. And unfortunately, when you get put in the spam filter, they never tell you. You have to just see your traffic tank and then email them until they take you out of the spam filter. But a lot of people freak out way too hard when I say don't pin the same links over and over again. If you pin the same links in the same week, you are gonna be fine. Like it is not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. But I understand because it is scary to think about getting marked as spam and then never knowing about it. What I recommend that I have all of my students do and all of my clients do is pin two to five pins a day and choose a certain amount of links and do a certain amount of designs for the week and then switching them out the next week. This has been my strategy for the past four years. All of my clients are growing with this strategy. All of my students are growing. So this is the easiest and best simple strategy that you can use. So my strategy is let's say you want to do five pins a day. You are going to choose 10 links and create four different designs. And then you are going to create content using those 10 links and four different designs for the entire week. I have a bigger breakdown for this exact strategy, which I will link up here. But all you need to do is choose a certain amount of links, create a certain amount of designs, use those for the week, and then pin that link every other day. So with this example, I will choose five links and I would have four different designs that would go out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And then I would take away one of those designs for the other three days and pin the other five links equaling 10, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So the link will get four different designs and it will get pinned every other day. It is a little bit confusing, but I do show you how to do it in the video that I link up here. So if you want an in-depth strategy on that, check that out up there. But it's super simple. I have this exact thing down to a science. It is so incredibly simple and it saves a lot of time. But I do wanna talk a little bit more about this pinning strategy because this is gonna be the bread and butter of how you get traffic to your blog. So in terms of branding, I would not worry too much about branding with Pinterest. Sometimes I have clients and students come to me and say, this is the exact branding that I need. I need these colors, I need these designs, and I need these fonts to be put in. And that can work. It's not like a huge deal, but you do not need to have incredibly rigid branding on Pinterest. In fact, if you are just starting out, I would recommend that you branch out and do a bunch of different things because branding on Pinterest really does not matter that much. You never know what's going to do well. So just put out a ton of different designs, a ton of different colors. If you wanna start with like, let's say you have your branding fonts, you have your branding colors, and you wanna start out with those, Great, fantastic, try those out. It may very well work for you, but I would recommend testing out different designs, testing out different colors and seeing what works because what you are doing now may work well, but you never know if a different design or a different font or something is going to work even better in the future. So don't be afraid to get a little bit crazy and try things out of your comfort zone in terms of designs and all of that. But if you are completely stuck and you don't even know where to start, there's a few places that you can go. You can start looking at Canva because they have a bunch of free or paid designs that you can use. I use Canva quite literally every single day and it is the best tool out there for beginner bloggers. It is absolutely insane the amount of different things that they have on there, but especially for Pinterest. Now, I personally recommend that you get the pro version because you get access to everything. 
all the designs, all of the pictures, all of the different graphics, everything. But you don't necessarily need to. You can just use the free version and you can look on there for different Pinterest pin designs. But I don't really like the Canva designs that much. I feel like they won't do as well. And I don't really see a whole lot of people using the type of designs that Canva gives to you. So I would really use those as a starting point and then change them up to match what is going to actually do well on Pinterest. And the best way to figure out what is going to do well on Pinterest within your niche is to do a little bit of research. Now I have had multiple different clients over multiple different niches. So I get to see really the back end of this design is going to work well for this niche or this design is gonna work well for this niche. So you need to figure out what is going to do well in your niche. So again, we're gonna go back to that search bar and look up your topic. If you have picked a blog post for the week, check out some keywords in that topic, type them up and see what pins are ranking. Chances are the designs are going to be very, very similar. The colors are gonna be very, very similar. Now you don't want to make your designs the exact same as those people's because you want your stuff to stand out so that people will actually click on it when they look that term up, you want them to click on your pin. So I would not do the exact same as what everybody else is doing, but see what is working and then put your own spin on it. And that is the easiest way to come up with designs because you can take a look at what's already working, what's already ranking and what's already doing well, and then find your own style throughout there. And then after some time of pinning, it usually takes me about two or three months of pinning random things to see, okay, these are the designs that are working. And then you can just keep doing more of that. It is really so simple. Once you get a strategy down, you can do this in two hours a week. It is so simple once you know what you are doing. So once you start honing in on a design, just remix the classics. Now that doesn't mean that you should completely get rid of experimenting. Let's say you do four designs throughout the week, maybe make one of those designs a little bit out there and see maybe this design will work better. Maybe this color combination will work better and still do some experimenting. But if you're trying to get a lot of traffic to your blog quickly, figure out what works and stick to it for a while. And then over time, you can always evolve a little bit. And this is the exact strategy that I use for my clients to get results like this. This is a three month result of when I started working with this client to last month. And it's crazy the growth that you can see if you are using this strategy or you can get results like this one. I have been working with this client for almost a year now and they are getting 15 million impressions in the last 30 days using this exact strategy week after week after week. And both of these clients are doing five pins a day, but you don't have to do five pins a day. I have seen people take off with two pins a day. I've seen them take off with three pins a day. So the amount that you are doing, if you do more pins, you're obviously going to do better quicker. But if you only have time to do two, you can still do well with just two pins a day. Pinterest has such a huge potential when it comes to blog traffic. And I have seen that time and time again over the years with my students and with my clients. So if you are not using Pinterest for your blog traffic, you need to get started right now. And make sure to like if you like and subscribe to my channel down below for more videos just like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.